G'day everybody, thanks again for watching Fish That Snag. Um, all your support is uh, greatly appreciated. I, I, I want to say first up, I've been absolutely overwhelmed by the amount of comments, not just on the YouTube channel, but through all the different uh, groups on Facebook. There's been a lot of people saying some very kind words, which I really appreciate, so thank you so much. Um, I'm a little bit taken back by the popularity of, of doing uh, a little, little activity like this. Um, so... I get the impression that people have enjoyed it so if you have please leave a comment to let me know um, any improvements or suggestions or anything like that um, because I'll definitely uh, do another one very similar to this um, I had a cracker of a week uh, chasing tiger squid in the bay um, so I've got one set up to do with chasing tiger squid if you want to have a a bit of a go at that okay so the game was um, not where you cast, but where the fish strikes. So, for instance, uh, some people might have cast up into B2 and retrieved their lure back down this way somewhere. And their answer might have been, for instance, uh, E7 as where the fish actually struck. Um, so the photo I've got, which is taken straight off the footage, shows the fish actually rising out of the water. He hit it, there was a, a, a brief run for about a second or so and he came up really quick so I had to change the rod angle very quickly because he, he raised his head real quick out of the water to try and shake the lure out uh, and it's just because it's so shallow. So even though he might have hit it a metre or so around where he actually is, I'm going to uh, pretty much zero in on, on that photo of where the fish rises um, shortly. Rightio, so on screen now is the still shot taken off the footage of as the fish is just breaking the surface after striking the lure. You can see him just there where my cursor is, uh, just poking his head out, just in front of that weedy ground. Now I realise when you place the grid squares over the top of this it's not quite the same as um, the other angle of the photo. The other, the photo the first photo, the boat was about here, I think, as I've taken the photo back that way. And then we've drifted a touch with the tide down this way. So I apologise for that. Obviously, being a draft first version, uh, it's one of the things I'll look to correct in uh, any any more of them what we do as we go forward. But I get a pretty good idea of which squid square he's he's raised his head and where he struck it, and and that's basically the answer that I'm gonna I'm gonna go on. Um, so he's right on the edge of this weedy ground. So if we refer that back to this original photo, uh, I'm going to basically hang my neck out and say that's where he's rose, round about there. You could say it's E6 or F6, and I guess there could be an argument for E and F7 as well uh, in that particular area. Um, like I said, he hit it with a definite thump. And then the drag sort of went and he was up in the surface pretty quick. So he could have hit it in, in any of this area here. Um, so I hope people aren't going to get too emotional about, you know, I picked E E7 and you've given it to F6. I'm going to launch a protest with Asada or something like that. I'm not quite sure. So um, please don't do that. Um, so we'll go, with, we'll go with F6 as the answer. Um, getting back to what was actually going on fishing wise which is probably more important actually to talk about what the theory was what what i noticed just over time having fished this a, a lot of a lot of times was there's a bit of a channel naturally straight through here where it's a little bit deeper in there just a tiny little bit it's probably more closer to the meter there about 80 centimeters there and then you've got a bit of a you know the the rise towards the shoreline up here um, and the way I approach fishing this particular creek mouth is the same theory with most of my creek mouths I, I sneak in I kill the main motor a good 100 to 150 meters out and I sneak in either drifting or the electric motor and then I position myself at maximum casting range and I fish pretty light you know four pound six pound at the most braid so from where the boat is here, I can cast and hit that bank. 
uh, quite confidently to do that. Uh, and I've got the wind behind me, so I'm I'm pretty confident that's that's where I am. Um, and essentially, that's my first part of this problem. Uh, these are all basically a fan approach to the creek entrance. I was essentially going to cast bang, 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 and just pepper this entire um, little spit of mud here and retrieve the lure with a slow hop back towards the boat. Uh, essentially covering the ground of where the bait's breaking, coming through that channel and also through the weed bed. Working on the theory that the flathead are either sitting in the weed bed, moving out to ambush anything in the channel, and hence pushing them up into the shallows, or they're sitting in the channel, attacking from bottom up, and again pushing them up onto the shallows, or there it might even actually just be sitting right on the lip here, and as bait fish is coming around, they're just smacking them straight up there. So I've got all bases covered, essentially, by using this, this approach. Once I'd exhausted this, if I hadn't got any fish, I mean, I was lucky that I aimed for that corner, and I brought it back, and I got it straight away. And then I just cast into this zone over and over and over again and that's exactly where they were I just got smashed up in there very very quickly within I think it was 10 casts I had five flathead on board so uh, it was pretty successful if I hadn't and I'd gone through and done all this casting my next step was to move the boat so this arrow here I'd move myself to get an angle and park around here as close as I can remembering that this is quite a deep little channel through here so with the electric motor pulled up a little bit I can I've got a 440 Quintrex Renegade so I can get into about 30 centimeters of water with the uh, the main motor up and just going on the electric so I can get in here quite easily I can even beach myself if I need to because I can get out fairly easily um, and I'd position myself there, and then I would, let's see if I can get this right, I'd pepper the back end of that spit all through the entrance. So the back of the spit, in case they're sitting on the reverse side, straight through the channel, and importantly, hit the other side as well, because they might be just sort of waiting on the other side as stuff comes around this spit up through the channel. Then as the tide comes in, I'd move my boat up to the next corner that you can see and I'd do exactly the same on the next likely ambush location. I would hit the left hand side and the right hand side, maybe one or two casts in the middle and then I'd move up to the next part and I'd just follow the tide all the way up until I'm you know, right at where the proper creek mouth entrance is at high tide uh, or three quarters tide or something. Um, so what I usually do when I'm fishing along the creeks on Fraser Island is I've got about six creek mouths which are, I'm, I'm a fairly regular visitor to. I'll pull up in this particular situation and I'll go smack 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 with my original casting pattern. I'll go smack across there, position the boat over to there if I need to. So if I haven't caught anything, I'll move over to there, and then I'll go bang, 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 and then I'll go right out, and I'll move to the next creek mouth. So I'm making the maximum use of the low tide change that I possibly can. So I'll, I'll spend 10, maybe 15 minutes, 10 probably at the most, smack, 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 don't get anything, bang, next creek. And I basically chase the tide up the inside of the island, and I do this, and then you know, obviously the tide's coming in and coming in and coming in, and then I'll reverse it and do the run back. Um, and by then, when I'm reversing it, I might be up in the second corner or the third corner or something like that. And I'll just keep rushing up and down doing that um, until I find one where there's fish. Once I find one where there's fish, usually one flathead, you find two or three, if not more, and that's all I need. And then I'll, uh, I'll head off and chase another species or head home or something like that. So there you go. Um, so we'll give it to F6, which is round about there. And again, I hope no one's going to get too emotional about it. Uh, the only person who guessed F6 was a username uh, Hobie Fisher on YouTube. Uh, and he put his uh, comment in on the 23rd. 
So what was that? That was Monday, I think. Um, so Hobie Fisher, I'll, I'll uh, reply to your comment and send you a message on uh, through YouTube, um, letting you know you got it. Uh, let you pick a uh, packet of soft plastics if you wish, uh, and I can put them together for you. And what I'll do is, um, if if the feedback's positive from everybody that you want to do another one of these, um, and you've got any ideas or suggestions on how to improve it, because seriously, I'm just making this up at the moment as we go, um, then please let me know, and I'll put another one together, uh, and we'll see how it goes. Okay, so thanks again for watching. Th an awesome, awesome response. Thank you so much for all the comments subscribers all that sort of stuff please again hit the like button leave a comment um, share it far and wide do all that sort of stuff please because um, i truly appreciate it and i hope to see you out in the water this weekend because it's looking good cheers